All right. Well, good day, everybody, and happy Monday. Is it a happy Monday? <laughs> well, uh, if you're watching this live here in Sarnia, Ontario, it's here. Merry Christmas. <laughs> the snow has arrived. Um, I think it was about 15 centimeters they're calling for. And it was a bit of a shocker. I mean, I'd heard it on the radio. You know, you hear the news and you get the weather alerts and all that stuff. But I don't think we take the weather serious enough when we get those weather alerts. I think we go, oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, sure, whatever. And, and I've been inside in the studio all day, and uh, there's another alert. I've been inside in the studio all day, and then I stuck my head out to check the mail, and it was like, wow. <laughs> it was snow everywhere. So be safe out there, I guess, is... Uh, the message there right you know i i was, it was last week i think we had um some weather yeah on last sunday and i had to drive my son to work and i still couldn't believe how fast people were driving and uh people were i had people behind me that were like gesturing <laughs> because i wasn't going fast enough but i'm just like where do you got to be on a sunday anyway so take it easy. Slow down and move over out there. I, I send that out there uh, because our friends uh, prefer towing from Heavy Rescue 401. Uh, slow down and move over because they're going to be busy out there. And not only is it the right thing to do, it's the law now. You can get $490 fine and three demerit points if when approaching a tow truck, police, fire, ambulance, any of the first responders, if you're able to move over to the other lane and you don't do that, you could get in big trouble and i dare you to go stand on the side of the highway with one of these tow trucks anyway so be good out there all right slow down and move over um busy weekend out there i hope you got out and enjoyed it i always say mondays are my favorite day because i get to do uh i do three shows on mondays and today i get to talk to some really cool people here in our community and i get to talk about some of the things that happened over the weekend so i hope you're able to get out and enjoy that and what am i talking about well i got to Give you the uh, Blackwater Coffee Sarnia Sting recap over the weekend. The Sarnia Sting, been struggling quite a bit this year. Uh, well, the, the struggle's there. I don't know. Define struggle. Are they winning every game? No. But they've been playing well. They're just ah, struggling on closing the deal, I guess you could say. If you uh, were to go back and look over, you'd see a lot of the games that the Sarnia Sting are playing are high-scoring games. But, again, I'm not quite not quite closing the deal all the time this past weekend was looking pretty good here though as uh things started off not looking too bad the sarnia sting recap here this week again brought to you by blackwater coffee uh they took on the niagara ice dogs and the ice dogs no stranger to winning that's for sure the niagara ice dogs number one in their division and uh in the top ranks in the entire ohl it was looking pretty good the first period came out and it was a score of zero to zero both teams all over each other. Sarnia Sting played very good hockey here uh, against the Niagara Ice Dogs. And then coming out in the second period, the goal started happening. It looked like they might get some advantage. But, of course, at the end there, you can see the Niagara Ice Dogs triumph over to the Sarnia Sting. And the final score of 4-3. to three. But in talking to the fans, I walk around in between uh, show intermissions, and I talked to a lot of the fans, and a lot of them said, you know, they played a really awesome game. And to come out 4-3 to three against one of the top teams in the entire league, uh, fantastic job there to the Sarnia Sting. Then yesterday, wow, final score here, 8-4 to four against the Hamilton Bulldogs, and it was pretty high scoring for quite some time for the Sarnia Sting. This is a perfect example of how the pendulum can swing in a game. Uh, it was significantly higher. It was about uh, 5 to nothing at one point for the Sarnia Sting. So for them to come out 8-4, to four, you can see how the Hamilton Bulldogs, no quitters at all, and uh, there was some aggression, some excitement and aggression in this game. Jamison Reese talked to us post-game uh, about the game that they're playing. They're going to be on the road now for quite some time uh, before they're back here on February the 9th uh, for a game against Guelph. And he himself had some aggression in the game. And we're going to take you to this post-game interview right now with Jamison Reese. Take a look. Post game with Jameson Reese. Uh, Jameson, I thought you guys uh, played a real solid game last night and kind of had the, the feeling that uh, you guys were going to come out here tonight and, and kind of carry that through and, and bring it on into this one. 
I mean, yeah, for sure. Uh, we had a very strong start, and I mean, we had a little bit of penalty trouble in the second, but I think we uh, brought it back on for the end of the third there and really took it to him. I've heard that uh, talk this week uh, quite a bit, the, the penalty trouble, you guys trying to kind of curb that. and uh, It's a fine line for you guys. I know they want you guys to go out and play strong, play hard, and, and kind of get in their face. Um, but, but penalties have been a little bit of an issue here looking back over the last few games. Uh, how do you guys work on that? And uh, again, it's a fine line. I know you got to try and pull back just, to, just enough to kind of, you know, pick your spots. I mean, yeah, we've been going into penalty struggles, but uh, I mean, you just have to control your emotions and do what you can to stay out of the box. And uh, now that uh, that hit in the uh, what was it the second or third period there that led to the fight, uh, I guess talk about that. Um, I was on the back check on the far side and I uh, sort of saw the guy itching to kind of cut in and I was just I was waiting until he did and he did and then I just I saw my moment and I took it. Um, Any idea you were going to get him that clean? I mean, I've hit guys like that before, but not that hard. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, I had a good moment and I took it. Just talking about a little bit. Obviously, he's missing some time after his fight. I mean, do you guys, is it going to factor into your mind when, when someone does come up? Do you have a chance to drop your gloves? Well, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, especially missing a guy like that. He's obviously one of our top guys on the team. And throws a big hit when we need and throws the gloves or drops the gloves when, he need, when we need to. So, I mean, I don't know. It wasn't really my choice to drop the gloves, but uh, I thought I held myself pretty strong there. You guys are uh, are used to scoring goals all season long. Uh, dried up a little bit in the last few weeks here. How how good was that for you guys tonight? Uh, you get eight uh, on the board and uh, moving forward here going into that next weekend on the road. Yeah, I mean, uh, for a couple guys on our team, and they've been a little bit dry, but I know they got their tallies in tonight, so that's good for us, and hopefully that carries on. Even while you have a great win tonight, um, when you head on the road, time for reflection. What kind of things do you still look at to improve on? I think we just carry on what we've been doing and I mean we let up a little bit in the second and I hope we just throw that part away of tonight's game and just play the way we did at the start and at the end. So you guys have been one road win the last maybe one and a half. Um, is there a different team on the road? What's been the, the issue for the guys? I just think we've been we've been struggling as a whole. I mean with penalties and everything but um, I think tonight it's a good note to go off on and into the road or onto the road so I think that's We'll be able to carry something strong. All right, once again, Jameson Reese there uh, talking to us post game yesterday as they victoriously win over the Hamilton Bulldogs in a foul score of eight to four. Um, I, know, I know the last question there might have been uh, hard to hear, but they're talking about is the Sarnia Sting a different team when they're on the road? Jameson Reese put it very well. He said they're recognizing that they've been struggling. And they just need to play 60 minutes of hockey, basically. But they did a fantastic job yesterday. Well played. And uh, against Niagara, once again, uh, big kudos to them. Uh, while it was a loss in 4-3, to three, they certainly played fantastic hockey. They're on the road now. They'll be heading up uh, North Bay Way and all over the place. We'll be uh, keeping you updated on our Facebook page of the scores of that, or you can follow along uh, on SarniaSting.com. They've got the schedule and the updates there. And then they will be back in the Progressive Auto Sales Arena, or as uh, we said, we like to call it PASA, right? <laughs> uh, they'll be back at the Progressive Auto Sales Arena on February the 9th, as they take on the Guelph Storm. And a special day this is going to be face-off for mental health uh, on behalf of St. Clair Child and Youth is uh, going to be there. And we're going to have some special announcements about that. But face-off for mental health, it's in its uh, second year, I believe, that was created a couple of years ago from a coach, a local coach, who stepped forward and said, I have some players on my team that are really struggling, and I'm a coach. I don't know how to handle this. And then Face Off for Mental Health was born. We've had uh, Liz Page uh, and St. Clair Child and Youth Services, some other folks there on here previously talking about that, and we'll have some more uh, coming up about that. Keep an eye always on the Facebook page and on Twitter. We're pretty active on Twitter there as well. So looking forward to the Sting versus Guelph on February the 9th. All right. Uh, real quick out there, I'll say hello to Corinder, who's watching. Thanks for watching, Corinder. And uh, Jameson Reese, uh, I, top of my head, I can't remember how old he is. But if you go to starningsting.com, you'll be able to find out there. Thanks for watching, Corinder. All right, well, you know, it's always uh, important to connect. Lots of ways to connect. And you need to connect and meet people and network and create relationships. And where do you do all of that? Well, we're going to talk to somebody coming up right now. Peter Rankin is here in our lobby and he's going to come on right now. Hello, Peter. Thanks for being here. 
Hi, Dave. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I appreciate you taking the time out. Uh, well, you sort of heard the intro there. You know, you got to meet people and network and um, lots of things have changed over the years. Like uh, I'm a little bit older than you, but everything used to be face to face and a belly to belly business, we like to call it. But uh, right. you're sort of still uh, you're you're trying to create some of that for local business people but of a certain demographic, right? Correct. Uh, yeah, the age range we go for is uh, 19 to 39. Uh, if you fall outside of that, we're, you know, we're not going to ID at the door and toss you out. You won't kick uh, me out if I show up? No, no. Um, <laughs> but that's that's generally the age range we see yeah. is uh, looking for this engagement still. Uh, and that's usually who come out. But again, we've got people who come from all ages. So, yeah, yeah. So this is a group called Sarnia Connects. Uh, how did this group get started? Uh, it started uh, back in 2008, originally, uh, by Scott Pelko and Ryan Gervais. Uh, they're two uh, local businessmen, and uh, they started very simple, just get out, socialize, network with other professionals. And it was just simple, once a month activity, not a real formal setting, and it picked up from there. Uh, over the years, it's had various uh, iterations. It's been very successful. Uh, last uh, last year was a little bit dipped in numbers, uh, but this uh, past fall, we decided to breathe some new life into it. And I'm going back to the roots, keeping it very simple. And uh, yeah, so we're expecting a, a great turnout. Yeah, well, and I see uh, you're going to have some uh, fantastic entertainment there. I say that because I've known... I've known this gentleman, Dan Butts, for quite some time, and he's going to be performing uh, for the uh, for the event as well. Yes, yeah, he's going to be putting on a wonderful acoustic act in the background uh, during this event. So looking yeah. forward to hearing me again. I've heard him live a few times. So, Yeah, he's fantastic. I'm hoping – well, now that I know you won't kick an old 49-year-old <laughs> man out the door, I might be able to show up and uh, see my friend Dan. What What's different about Sarnia Connects? I mean, there's other networking groups here in town, but – um, you know, like the chamber has their business after five. Right. Um, what makes this different besides the age demographic? Uh, it's, I think it's a simple, the simple structure that it's, it's had since the beginning and it really works. It's what tied me in a few years ago when I started showing up, okay. uh, you come in and right from the time you step through the door, you're made to feel welcome. It doesn't have a, a formal structure that it's simple right. steps of, you come in, you're greeted, you're introduced, especially in your first few times, and you don't really know anyone, so you're not just on the outside. Um, mm -hmm. Food, there's drinks, good times. There's always a local business who sponsors each event. Uh, the event this week, it's sponsored by Revelry Entertainment. Right. Uh, so the sponsor gets about two to three minutes to speak, and then it's, it's back to people uh, networking and socializing. Yeah. Let's talk about Revelry um, and their, their, their space there. What are they, what are they about? So Revelry Entertainment, uh, they've recently launched their ticket online ticket system. Yeah. Uh, so they're providing a ticket platform for events and bands, groups. You need tickets. Uh, they provide that service. And one of the one of the changes actually to to uh, connects this year is instead of going at uh, Collide on um, Street. Um, in this co-working space. So this is where we're gonna meet. So it's simple, last Thursday every month, you come in and network, food, drinks, it's gonna be great. Right, so this oh, this is a this is a regular, uh, like I said, last Thursday of every month. Is it always gonna happen at Collide or will it be at different locations? For the foreseeable future, it's always gonna be at Collide. So we've yeah. been fortunate uh, enough to partner with, uh, with them on this. So it provides one less thing to worry about, uh, oh, where are we going this time, so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I get the concept of moving around, but, uh, um, you know, I think there is something to be said for, I know where I'm going every month. Right, <laughs> it creates a I'm nice a routine, and, and we're all about keeping keeping it simple, having a good time. That's the main focus, so. Yeah. Can you talk about Collide a little bit? I know this is something new, and uh, uh, I've been trying to connect with them a little bit uh, to mm -hmm. have them on, but uh, maybe you can tell people what this, this new Collide, I, I guess, a, a space, a shared space, right? Right, so Clyde is a shared co-working space. Uh, it's, as I said before, it's on Front Street. And uh, so it's got it's fairly open uh, concept space that we're lucky to, to come across. Uh, so there's 
varying levels of membership. There's, um, there's desks, there's a few offices that are available uh, or currently are rented now. Uh, there's a boardroom. So if you, you know, you work from home base or even if you have an office elsewhere and you just, you need somewhere else to work, you want somewhere to meet clients. Like my own business is home base, but it's nice to have a place to, to meet people other than your own home. Yeah. Uh, so Collide provides this and they have multiple membership options. So it, it'll suit any budget really. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. So let's, let's network a little bit here. I mean, we're talking about starting to connect. Uh, um, well, first off, how many people are you expecting up for this? Are you expecting uh, over the past? Generally, we've seen forty to sixty okay. uh, people turn out to these events. Last year, it kind of dipped a bit, but uh, we're expecting to see those numbers come back soon. So, right. why why do you think it dipped down? Uh, I think it was just trying a few different things and kind of strayed from its roots uh, okay. a little bit, and then again too with people's schedules. So we had some regulars kind of move off to other places and so it's just we decided uh this fall to just bring it back to what works so get back to the basics exactly good times yeah. and keeping it simple right what's uh what's your business in, and what's your background peter uh so right now i have my own uh consulting business starboard service company i specialize with accounting and okay. uh, business planning and that so yeah, and before uh, I was in the Navy and then went to college, got my degree from Nipissing University and then decided to work for myself, so. Perfect. So how did you, uh, what's, because uh, you you work, uh, you're a coordinator, what's your title with Sarnia Connect? Right, so I, I was appointed coordinator in the fall of, um, of Sarnia Connect. So before I was just attending them and then uh, I, I was like, okay, I want to I wanna take this one step farther. Like I want to be directly involved. So now I kind of, Organize everything, get it going, make sure the events happen, sponsors, and all that, all the fun yeah. stuff. So. Yeah, been getting good support from. Uh, you mentioned sponsors in there. Uh, I mean, it always takes money to make these things work, right? So, right, um, has this been uh, um, a positive thing in the community? Like, you've been getting good feedback from and support. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's. There's been lots of uh, positive responses, and and even when we. Uh, couple of weeks ago when we first announced this upcoming event this week, we were, it was almost instant. Some of the responses and you know, oh, yeah. it's, it's all been positive. So, yeah. So aside from social media, um, how do you get the word out there about these events or is that, is that your main? Well, we have uh, we have an email uh, list so people can go to our website, sarniconnects.com. There's links yep. to both our Facebook and Instagram there. The upcoming event is always posted right there on the main page, and there's a spot to easily uh, subscribe for our email list. Okay. And even when you come to the event, you can give us your email, and we can add you to the list, and then you'll get a couple emails. Uh, we don't like to bombard people, uh, but you'll okay. get upcoming email. You'll get a reminder email. And, uh, and the benefit of actually being one of the sponsors is the month that you're sponsoring is then there's advertising for you with our posts and our emails. Okay, so you're always looking for some more uh, some some more sponsors to come yes, on board. Yes, we're then? always always looking uh, looking for more sponsors. So, yeah. Now, what kind of activities can I expect as a, somebody who comes out there? Like, okay, so we got Dan playing the music, and we're gonna have some bevies, and we're gonna stand around and talk. But do you do you, do you have other things that are going on at the event? Normally, not. Uh, we are looking that um, providing you know the numbers go back to where we're pretty sure they're gonna be uh, this summer. Uh, is possibly do a golf tournament. It's happened in the past and has always had a really like positive um, response, great turnout. Uh, it's been fun for everyone. So we're looking at, uh, at possibly doing that again this year or, you know, next year. Yeah. Okay. But for the most part, these events, we didn't want to, they're not overly structured in the sense of, okay, you do yeah. this every time. It's just come network. We're providing the space for people to do what they do best, mingle and, and go from there. Right. And in this space, you, you say you bring food in. So is that, uh, do you, is that a food sponsor? Like, do they get that catered uh, in or where does that come from? It, it depends on the, on the event, I guess. Uh, this time it's kind of, uh, it's coming from a few different locations, but it has in the past, even at other locations come from either someone sponsored it or the sponsor uh, had set up a deal with a local, um, local food provider and then they've, they've catered in. Okay. 
right. And where where is uh, tell everybody where I, I know you said it earlier, but you were kind of cutting in and out. Where is the location? So we're at uh, Collide, which is one forty eight Front Street North. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So right downtown, starting right downtown, just a couple doors past sideways. So. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sideways. So when we're done at Sarnia Connects, we can head down to sideways and yeah, carry on I'm more. sure they would they would appreciate it too. <laughs> <laughs> What uh, you as a business person, um, it's obviously important to, uh, you know, connect with other business people, but uh, and and networking is important. But what would you say uh, is the most you've gotten out of, uh, you know, being a part of Serenity Connects and participating in things like that? I've gotten some good, long lasting, uh, strong friendships and not even just, you know, as I said, like business wise, but like just people that never became clients. We haven't done business together, but it's just, it, it improves your social network. And uh, another aspect I've been able to, I guess, take advantage of is other people I work with. And it's like, oh, you know, I don't provide that service, but I do know someone who does. And they can actually, you know, vouch for the person other than just seeing their name on a billboard is I've had lots of conversations with it. So it's, there's not just direct business connections, but you create secondary and, you know, connections and just it's personal social. It's, it's been well, it's, yeah. it's done well. So relationships, right? Yes. Oh yeah. It's very important. And especially in a small town like Sarnia, it's, it's great. And you never know. I'm still like every, every time I go, you're, you're always learning something new. Yeah. Well, that's a good point. I, I'm glad you said that. Um, you sort of caught on to where I was going. I think maybe um, it, a lot of times, you know, we go to these things and I've heard people say, oh, it's the same people all the time. It's the same people all the time. There may be, there may be the same, a lot of the same people going regularly, which is good because you can't have all the conversations in one night. Right. Um, but you never know who you might miss if you don't go. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that, that would be fair. Um, just speaking from my own experience uh, two years ago when I started, I started recognizing Kind of early on okay these are the regulars but every single meeting like there was those people and then there's people who hadn't been out in a while they come out and then there, there was always new people coming in so like yeah yeah you can find okay yeah so and so's here again you get caught up and then you're like oh okay. new people and then it just it's just an ever-changing environment but it's not you know it's always new so you got a nice balance of new and regular so you got people yeah. who can really help you out they they know who's all been there. And that's the other thing, like everyone to feel welcome is it's not just those of us uh, organizing it that are helping to introduce. You've got yeah. people who've been here before that are helping. Yeah. Well, we tend to, I think when we go to these things, um, we tend to, we see a familiar face and we go to that person, right? We want to be comfortable. Right. Hey, how's it? Hey, Peter. Oh, good to see you again. And that's good. We should say hello to each other, but I, this is just me. I like to seek out new faces and then I walk up to them and I put my hand out and I go, hello, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, and, I've never seen you before. Who are you? What do you do? What's your story? Oh, exactly. And that's, that's how I've had actually some of my, my better connections happen um, within, I think it's actually my first event within 30 seconds, someone sat down right across from me like, Hey, I'm so-and-so. This is what I do. What do you do? And then yeah. I was like, it's stuck. And I was like, Oh, this is great. And then I try and make an effort to some events, to, you know, Depends on the event sometimes, but like I always try and make an effort and like meet, if not every new person, but meet as many of them as I can. And then, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, if I want to see the same people all the time and talk to the same people all the time, I'll find out what bar they're hanging at, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll do that down at Sideways. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Peter, uh, I want to thank you so much for, I know you, you're, uh, you're busy. Uh, you got a busy time uh, going on and getting things all ready for this. Uh, one more time, tell everybody, Serenity Connects who, what, where, when, and we'll, we've got you up on the screen here. Right, so Sarnia Connects, uh, Young Professionals Networking uh, Servicing Sarnia Lampton. We're uh, located at 148 Front Street North uh, in Collide, last Thursday of every month. Uh, runs starts at five, usually goes to about seven. Food and drink, it's free to attend. Oh, that's oh being... Sorry? No, I, I was going to ask you that because we hadn't talked about if there was a price or not. Oh, no. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, it's free to attend. 
Uh, there's going to be food. Uh, as we mentioned, Dan Butts is going to be providing acoustic uh, act in the background. So it's going to be it's going to be a wonderful time. So just mark your calendars. Last Thursday of every month. Perfect. Not going to be disappointed. Well, I know I'm overage, but uh, I'm, well, I'm going to do in. my best to pop by, and I'll be the old guy in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, thank you so much. We'll thank look forward you. to meeting you in person. Thanks. All right, Peter Rankin from Sarnia Connects. Uh, it's great to see. Networking is really important. You know, I, like I said, I know that the Chamber has a wonderful event. They do once a month as well. But I think uh, there's – Peter mentioned too, there's scheduling. Sometimes the timing's not right or – just a different group of people because uh, there's lots of people live here in our city, in your city, wherever you're at. So Sarnia Connects happening this Thursday night. And yeah, Dan Butts, I haven't seen him perform. I've known him a long time. I'm not going to say how long. Uh, might be going way back to my karaoke days. Woo. Um, he, he'll be, fin he's, he's a good reason alone that you just want to head down there and uh, check out Sarnia Connects. And it, as Peter said, the last Thursday of every month, mark it on your calendar. Get out and meet some new people. You never know. You never know what you might miss. I know we can't be everywhere all the time, but uh, that's good. Thanks, Peter. Um, you know, there's lots going on in this city and uh, things that we got to keep an eye on, right? And what about the crime in our city? What's our part and role in all of this? Our part and our role to keep our eyes out? Who do we uh, go to for support in this city? Obviously, we have our Cernia police. But our Sarnia police cannot be everywhere all the time. So what part, what role do we play in protecting our city, right? Sarnia Lampton Crime Stoppers is a nonprofit organization here in our city. And Les Jones is here somewhere. Uh, Les Jones is going to be joining us here in just a moment. Whoop, here I am self-producing again. Um, Sarnia Lampton Crime Stoppers is an important part in our community to protect our community. Is it just up to the police alone? No, there's not enough anyway. Starting Lampton Crime Stoppers helps us with that. And uh, Les Jones is here in the lobby. There you are, Les. I'm here. Hey, good to see you again. How you doing, Dave? I'm doing fantastic. Les, I was just, I, I was just kind of, I don't know how much of that you heard there, but I was just talking about, you know, re responsibility in our community. I think a lot of times uh, people go and, and, you know, where's the police when you need them? You know, I'm sure you've heard that. Or, uh, I mean, if you want to be protected, move next door to a police officer, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, really, there, there's there's not enough eyes out there. I mean, there's 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 always an issue with money and all that sort mm -hmm. of stuff. But it's really our responsibility as community members, is it not, to to keep an eye on our neighborhoods? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The, so police have always since. Uh, police departments were formed. They've always relied on the public to help them. So yeah. the public are the eyes and ears in the community, and and that's why an organization like Crime Stoppers, we just we're just another uh, another tool in the toolbox for an investigator, and it's another way for the public to get that information to the police. Yeah. And in the case of Crime Stoppers, you don't have to uh, provide your identity. Yeah. Let's. Okay. So you say. Now, of course, Les, I know you really well, uh, and I know you wouldn't lie to me about that. But I, I think some people go, um, well, yeah, but they got caller ID. Or how, how is it anonymous, and how well do you protect that person's identity? Good question. So we do, don't have caller ID. We don't have call trace. Uh, in the office here, I have two telephones. One is for because uh, I work out of the police station. One is to call other uh, people in the police station and call out. The other phone is a dedicated line. And if you saw, the, the phone is very, very basic phone. Yeah. And uh, so we don't, yeah, we don't have caller ID. Um, and we work very, very hard to protect the identity of, of the caller. Even if I'm on the line uh, having a conversation with a tipster, and if they provide identifying information, then the whole process stops. And right. yeah, yeah. So they're, they're given uh, the option of, of calling the law enforcement agent directly. So we, we strive, we work very, very hard to make yeah. sure that identities are not given. Yeah. That, that's the backbone of the, uh, 
of the program, really. Yeah. Well, and, and, and I knew that. So uh, I just wanted to put that out there, right? Because you and I have talked about that many times before, but I think there's uh, the relationship. There's, there's a huge trust factor going on here, you know, right? Like uh, people have to ha have that trust factor when picking up the phone and, mm -hmm. and, and tipping that off. Cause uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Nobody likes nobody likes to squeal, right? Nobody right, likes right, to right. tell or be a rat or whatever the terminology mm -hmm. is. Um, and and again, back to you know, you hear people say, "Well, that's what we pay them for. We shouldn't have." Like, come on, right? Like, we all got to do our little part. And um, what's what's the number one? Uh, I don't say number one tip or what's what's the cause for concern right now and as far as uh, what you're hearing from tipsters and crime stoppers so it's it's the what's causing all the problems in the city right now what's the big buzz in the city and that's drugs so yeah. the vast majority of our uh, tips that come in are related around uh, illegal drugs whether right. it's the uh, the selling or, or uh, transporting whatever but it, it's drugs and then along with uh, drugs uh come the crimes the the thefts yeah. the break and enters so so i would say yeah definitely uh, without a doubt the majority are drug related and then property crimes such as break and enters and and thefts yeah it's really and it's it's concerning right Les, because you've been uh well you're, you're retired uh police officer now but you were on the force for how many years uh, I did 30 years, yes. Yeah, 30 years. And you come from a military background as well, correct? That's correct, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Um, and, and I've known you a long time in there somewhere. Um, you've probably seen a lot of changes over the years as far as the drugs in this city goes, right? Oh, um, absolutely. We never it, – it's, it's – some people call it an epidemic. And yeah. uh, absolutely, absolutely. It, it's – uh, there's not too many people in the community now that haven't been affected somehow um, with especially the opiates. There's, uh, I don't think there's anybody that can't say they don't know of somebody that's um, OD'd um, or has been yeah. arrested for or their life has gone to hell in a handbasket, for lack of a yeah. better term, because yeah. of uh, the use of, of drugs. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've even seen a change and, and you know where I, uh, my house is located. Um, uh, five years ago it, to now, I've, we've really seen a big change uh, just walking around. Right. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and there's very uh, few, very few uh, places in the city, Dave, uh, that, that's not affected. There's yeah. very few places. Yeah. Are we going to get a hold of this thing, do you think? I don't know. It's been going on for a while and it seems to be getting worse. And uh, um, I know there's, there's programs like the patch for patch program that was started here for a few yep. years, trying to cut down on it. Um, but I think it's got to be, and I, I don't think it, well, I know it's not just a local problem. Opiate um, are a problem throughout the country and until all levels of government make it a priority and, and try to change the whole structure of, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, how the drugs are prescribed, then yeah. it's going to be a problem for, for quite a while. Yeah. Well, and because it's got to come from somewhere too, right? And typically mm -hmm. I would think um, they're only coming when they're, if the drugs are coming to Sarnia, they're typically only coming from one direction. Absolutely. Because yeah. there's water that way and there's water that way. And I don't think you'd want to be, guy stupid enough to try to bring it over the border so it's, it's either coming yeah. from the direction of toronto or maybe windsor right yeah um, absolutely yeah that's how it's getting here yeah yeah so does that uh <laughs> i guess does that uh are we headed in the direction of other cities that have like we only have two directions it comes from you go to some place like london or toronto they got four directions it can all come from but are yeah, we headed yeah. in their direction i i think i i think we're there already yeah, I think we'd be uh, kidding ourselves if we didn't realize that mm -hmm. um, you know this isn't a big city problem. It's it's here and it is a problem. Uh, I know the uh, the vice unit here uh, works nonstop, and uh, I see complaints on Facebook 
from members of the public that they don't think they're doing enough, but it's just that there, there's really so much work out there. It's hard for them to keep up. Yeah. Well, it's not, you know, I think people need to understand too. It's not Miami vice. You can't just go in and kick in doors and whatever. I mean, there's yeah. door kicking that goes on, but there's a process in all of this too. Right. And, and uh, sometimes I think your hands are tied as a police officer uh, to want to probably do more. Is that, is that, um, are, are governments working with, with our police officers to try to pull this off or is it, is there too much restraint there or? Well, you know, the law is the law and it changes. It's a, uh, it's not stagnant. It changes over the years. Um, even since I was in policing, they, uh, they ch- got rid of the old narcotic control act and came up with the controlled drugs and substances act. And, and now they even have the cannabis act since uh, I've been gone three years. So uh, policing always has to change and adapt to those changes in the law and uh, including case law. So um, warrants now to get a warrant is there's a lot more work involved, Mm -hmm. um, a, a lot more sourcing as we call it. So yes, it does take a little bit longer. Yeah. Uh, it takes more work to get a warrant, um, but it's just something that police police officers deal with uh, the changing laws and and what's required in court. Yeah, well, you police officers um, don't make the laws; you just no. enforce them. That's correct. Uh, and I think I think people forget that sometimes. I I remember uh, I remember Harrison Ford in the movie The Fugitive. Right. And, and he's chasing mm-hmm. the guy down. He's chasing the guy down. He keeps chasing the guy down. Uh, Tommy, Tommy Lee Jones, I think, or Tom Jones or whatever. Well, that guy is, was chasing yeah. down Harrison Ford. And um, I think he was convinced that he was innocent. Then he looks at him. He says, I'm innocent. And he says, I don't care. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not my job. My job is to, you know, try to. So, I mean, uh, I'm sure it can be frustrating out, out there. And, and uh, I I know a lot of the folks on the force and stuff. And I had a lot of conversations. And I, I'm pleased to say that they're doing everything they can out there. They can't be everywhere. And that's why Crime Stoppers is important um, to our, our city and, and all the communities that Crime Stoppers is is in, but I think it's important for people people to understand too, Les, that you're not uh, the government is not throwing money at Crime Stoppers to say here's another uh, tool in the toolbox to help things work. You're a nonprofit organization. That's correct. We get no federal, no provincial, no county funding at all. Um, yeah. We're very lucky. The Sarnia Police help. They do help us out yeah. um, to run Crime Stoppers here locally. Uh, we need to raise between sixty and seventy thousand dollars a year, probably closer to seventy thousand dollars each and every year, just to keep mm-hmm. the program running. Um, and so, like I said, we we get some help from the Sarnia Police, uh, and we have some great community partners out there, uh, yeah. you know, donating a vehicle for us. Um, yeah, that was uh, Bay- Bayview with- Chrysler, wasn't it? Did I get that right? No, no, it's uh, Automax. Automax. Oh, it's Automax. Uh, sorry. Yeah, this is the second vehicle that Auto. I didn't know if I could mention that. Yeah, you uh, mentioned. Yeah, no. I just I'm the one who just screwed it up. They both. Yeah, got- no. Automax. Gr- they've they've helped us out with our last two vehicles, um, and then we got it wrapped. Uh, the decals on it from Ask Guy at AG Graphics. Oh yeah, right. Another great. Yeah, and um, A1 Security. Uh, another big uh, community helper. They, um, we have the A1 Security uh, Crime of the Week every week. That's on a local news station. Uh, yeah. They help us out with that. Lampton Mall's great to us, and I know I'm going to forget a few. All uh, Allstate, another great community partner. So without these people and the help we get from the Sarnia Police, um, we would have a hard time uh, keeping. Crime Stoppers program here in Sarnia Lampton uh, alive. Yeah. So we have to, un- we have to fundraise. Yeah. And I know you, uh, you mentioned the local news radio station, but you can say CHOK. Yeah. Um, yeah. You and, and, uh, and you yeah. actually guys come on to the Miami vice theme, don't you? Uh, well, the, yeah, the two guys do that do it now, <laughs> but we, uh, every Friday uh, in the afternoon on uh, Blackburn runs the, our, uh, our crime of the week. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, um, we're very thankful uh, for that as well. Yeah, that A One Security has help helps us out with that. Yeah, fun fundraising uh, certainly important. Um, I know you guys like do golf tournaments, 
And yeah. uh, you've had bowling tournaments. And uh, we got Sean Robbins in your pocket there. He's Mr. Marketer, isn't he? <laughs> oh, yeah. he's, he's uh, he, You don't have to talk to him for too long to realize he's a salesman. Yeah, he knows what he's doing for sure. Yeah. Um, let's talk about uh, jail and bail. I know that uh, the last couple of years uh, we had the virtual bail and jail. That's going to be happening again sometime again? Yeah, we don't. It'll be in May. Uh, we don't have the exact date yet, but we should be announcing that within the next couple of weeks. Okay. Um, and you know, talk about community partner. There, there's yourself, right? That uh, you've helped us out the last couple of years, uh, broadcasting that live. So yeah. Um, yeah. So in May, we'll we'll come up with a date in, in the next couple of weeks and uh, hammer it out and uh, start yeah. looking for people to to lock up again. Yeah, I think it's really important. Lesson. I I think. Uh, like I said, the whole nonprofit thing, I think it's important for people to understand that, that you raise money just like any other nonprofit organization in this city does. And um, there's a lot that needs to be done. And we, we all really need to, to, to do our, our, our part. And uh, not even just, not even just uh, with Crime Stoppers, right? But I mean, um, just whatever we can do to keep our neighborhoods clean. Right. You know, and, and if you're walking down the street, I, I find a lot of people, uh, and this is probably still true to this. Well, I know it is like a stolen bike. For example, my mm -hmm. son had his bike stolen a couple of times and he was like, I'm not going to bother calling dad because it's not going to be a priority to them. Well, wait a minute. It might, and, and it might not be compared to other things that are going on, but it's still important for people to report the crime though. Is it not for, for tracking purposes? Oh, absolutely. So that happens quite often. Uh, I used to uh, be the liaison uh, officer for Neighborhood Watch, and uh, or you get we would get a, a Facebook uh, or a comment sent to us some way saying there's a problem in my neighborhood, and we'd look yeah. up the calls for service, and there's nothing there because yeah. people don't call. Yeah. So if we don't know that there's a problem in your neighborhood, how can we go and? fix it. We, we need that communication with members of the public to tell us that there's a problem. Yeah. And, and not just one person making a call is enough. You go, okay, no, everybody needs to be in on that. Yeah. And, one call uh, is a crime. A bunch of calls, that's a crime way more or less, right? Yeah. yeah so that's we right. need the people to, to call in and let us know what's going on. You know, there's something is uh, like uh, going through your car. Yeah you know, oh, I'm not going to bother. And, and we, you know what, we probably won't be able to solve that crime. Yeah. But if we know that there's, uh, or the Sarnia police, uh, if they realize there's a problem with certain areas of the city being hit, then they'll, they'll step up patrols. They'll start looking yeah. in that area for a possible suspect. Yeah. So we need to know what's going on. Well, and speaking of eyes, there is something in this world now that most people have. Uh, they've got these things, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of people have uh, home camera systems, you know, in their driveways or facing down the street or wherever that is. Um, there's And there's a new program initiative that you've got going on, right? Yeah, we don't have it up and running yet. So we're just, it's taking some time. But it's uh, we're working with the Sarnia Police Service. Uh, we're going to give them some, uh, we've got somebody that's uh, donated uh some advertising dollars. So it's going to be a uh, security camera registry program. So you will go online. It can be either a, a private citizen or a business. We'll go on the Sarnia Police website. There'll be uh, eventually there'll be a button there. Click on if you want to register your, uh, that you have a security camera. And we so a lot of people now think, okay, this is big brother stuff, right? Yeah, well, but, yeah, I was going to get to that. <laughs> yeah, so, so the way the, the police department will not have access to your cameras or your anything at your home. All right. we need, all we want is a contact number. So yeah. if you live on, say, at 123 Anywhere Street in the city of Sarnia, and we know there's been a crime on that street, Instead of having to send out officers knocking door to door to door, hey, do you have any camera system? You may not even be home. So now we will have your contact information. So we can simply send you an email. Hey, we've had a crime in your area. We'd like to have a look at your camera. Yeah. You can deny that. You can say, uh, you know what? Not today or whatever, but at least we'll have an area, we'll have uh, those camera systems 
mapped. And that won't be made, it won't go to the public or anything. It just, again, another tool in the toolbox uh, for the investigating officers. Uh, it helps to cut down on some investigative time so that they, they quickly have a map showing them where the cameras are in a certain area. Yeah. And think- as you've probably seen, uh, the Sarnia police, and I did it a lot when I was still working in media, we send out a lot of uh, pictures and a lot of video to the public asking for help. Yep. So it's great evidentiary value. It's helped yeah. solve a lot of cases, both, um, you know, what people would call petty crimes and, and even yeah. higher level crimes. So it's, it's, yeah. it's a very important tool. And so we're hoping to have that running within the next month. Okay. Uh, where you'll be yeah, able to I, register. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, technical things going on there and some privacy things and all that sort of stuff that you got to figure out. But, uh, uh, it's, it's almost like the, uh, the, the Google maps for, for police officers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can never have enough eyes out there, right? Like, like we say, uh, our community, we, we, we all got to do our part instead of just pointing the finger saying my tax dollars pay you to, to protect me. Well, we know you and I know less, there's a lot more to it than just that. And um, this sounds like a, where, where did this initiative come from? Is this something that's being done in other cities? Yeah, it, it, it is. It's uh, been very successful in uh, other communities. Probably the closest one that I know have, have one is uh, Chatham. I know oh, okay. that for certain. I think London may have one. So it's, um, again, it's, it's a, a great, great assistance to, uh, yeah. to the investigating officer. Well, it saves it, a lot of time too, right? I mean, oh, you know, if, absolutely. If, you, if you can sit and look at your, uh, we're going to have to come up with a name. Do you have a name for it? Like no, Google, not, Cop, Google Cops? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's nice, plain and simple right now. Never thought of yeah. giving it a name. Maybe there we should. Know. But Well, it's fantastic this is all going on. And uh, Les, I, I know you've you got a lot on the go too, so I appreciate you uh, uh, taking time out of your day here to talk with uh, myself and my viewers because it's really important what you guys do. And uh, I'm happy to work with you guys anytime. And uh, as soon as you know what's going on with uh, – the uh, jail and bail, let me know, and I'll make sure that I can be there to broadcast it for you again. That sounds good. And once again, thanks for all your help. Appreciate it. Yeah, uh, No problem. Unless you take, is there anything else you want to throw out there that I might have forgotten before you go? No, no. I think we covered it all. All right. We'll talk to you soon, my friend. Take care. You bet. Bye. Uh, Les Jones, our friend from Sarnia Lampton Crime Stoppers. And what a cool, what a cool idea to... Uh, have this uh, uh, camera registry, right? And as as Les pointed out, it's uh, not Big Brother watching. It's just a simple, I have cameras at this location, and if you have crimes in this area and you want to contact me to look at my video, you can do that or not, whatever. Uh, You can never have enough eyes out there. So, uh, yeah, that's really cool. And, again, they are a nonprofit organization. They don't get money federally or provincially. They do get some support from the Sarnia police, but it's 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 not enough. They need to raise about sixty to seventy thousand dollars per year to make Sarnia Lampton Crime Stoppers work and to get their tips and to keep everything going, right? So do your part, everybody, to keep our community safe and uh, make the world a better place, right? There's lots going on out there. So Les Jones, thanks for joining us. I'm sure we'll have him back here uh, coming up again soon. What else have I got going on? Later on tonight, father versus son on Twitch. If you're watching, you go, what is Twitch? It's a platform where there's a lot of game playing going on, but there's talk shows and stuff going on. But tonight, it's father versus son. So my son and I play online games, and I try to beat him at his games. It's pretty funny. It's hilarious. That's every 8 o'clock Eastern. Excuse me, every Monday night, 8 o'clock Eastern. So come by. Uh, everything that we talked about here today also will be posted on the Facebook page after the show. So if there's anything you want to know about, uh, you can check it out there. Uh, Bell Let's Talk Day. Do you remember this? Every year, Bell Let's Talk. Talking about mental health, facing mental health. The conversation needs to continue about mental health. We have the conversation here often on the show. Uh, even when we're not talking about mental health, it seems to come up in the conversation. So Bell Let's Talk Day this year will be coming up January the 30th, and Bell will be donating uh, a portion. I think it's five cents for every text and social media share, 
Um, you can get the Bell Let's Talk frame for your Facebook and your Instagram. It's basically a day for us to all remind each other and talk about mental health. And that's, again, Bell Let's Talk coming up uh, this uh, so Wednesday, yes, January 30th. I'll be okay. Uh, special mention out to Lampton College and the Lampton Alliance who, uh, and the Sarnia Sting who recently had, uh, or recently, yesterday, had uh, an initiative supporting Bell Let's Talk Day and mental health. And, of course, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the Sarnia Sting working with St. Clair Child and Youth Services on February the 9th when they take on the Guelph Storm face-off for mental health. We'll be at the Progressive Auto Sales Arena. We'll be talking about more on that probably next week's show as well we'll have something about that uh also coming up this week the sarnia tech community is going to be having their gathering uh new tech new times new year and they welcome you to come and join them at their gathering uh the sarnia tech community meets on a regular basis as well and uh our friend mark dylan will be joining us next week i believe here to talk more about what they're doing in the Sarnia Tech community. Also, one of my favorite times, I haven't been in a while because I've been busy at some Sarnia Sting games, but I got this Friday off. I don't have to do anything. So I'm going to go down to First Friday and check out everything that's happening down at First Friday. And I will specifically be visiting my friends Cheeky Monkey as they always have their First Friday lineup entertainment. And this time, it's Strum and Drum. They'll be performing down there. And the art show by Bill Walters is also going to be in the house there. And that's going to go on from 7 till 9 on Friday night at Cheeky Monkey. But there's lots of other things happening down there. I've been I've been hanging out at the Hog Bar recently in downtown Sarnia. And i got to tell you, I went there uh, on uh, it was a Friday night that I went to see my friends, the Four Bill Blues Band. They had a blues night going on there. I hadn't seen Chris Jennison and the boys in a little while. Great crowd in there, and they got great food. Staff's awesome. So if you haven't been to the Hog Bar in downtown Cerny yet, uh, they're open every day of the week. Check them out. And uh, I'll be popping in there. I'm going to see Cheeky Monkey and going to see Strum and Drum and everything in there, and then I'll go across the street to the Hog Bar. So looking forward to that. And, yes, I still do karaoke once in a while. The Moose Lodge here in Sarnia is having another karaoke contest, their Moose Karaoke Contest, and they've asked me if – myself and my karaoke live self would be there so i'm happy to be hosting that that will start on saturday february the 16th open to the public come on down 7 to 11 p.m the contest will be on and there'll be open karaoke as well and i'll be your host for three weeks of that i'm excited to be a part of that thanks to the moose lodge for inviting me in there wow boy i'm gonna have to start doing a two-hour show maybe I don't know. Listen, if you can't watch me here live, you don't want to take me on the road with you, take me to work, take me. If you want to take Dave home, you can take me home. There it is. Uh, I'm on Anchor. Or we're on Google Podcasts. We're on Spotify now, Apple iTunes. Anywhere that you can download a podcast, the show with David Burroughs is on there for you to uh, take along. Take me on a – I need some exercise. Take me on a jog with you. All right. Now I'm being really silly, right? And uh, I want to say thanks to our friends at Blackwater Coffee for their support here as well for uh, supporting uh, the show and supporting us uh, at our Sarnia Sting uh, post-game comments and check them out online, blackwatercoffee.ca. Wow, there's a lot going on here today, isn't there? I think that's it. Yep. That's all the time I got for you this week. Have a great week and an even better weekend. And I will talk to you next time right here on the show. Bye for now.